Okay, last video for this week. Well, sort of. I mean, I have to do the overview video still, but anyways. Um, so we've talked about a lot of things from Covey, and one of the things that I really want to kind of tie this into is a theory called self-determination theory. And what that means... Self-determination theory fits in with Covey's very well. Let me get out of the way here. All right, this is better. So self-determination theory fits in with what Covey's talking about because Covey talks a lot about autonomy and what that means. Autonomy is the level of control that we feel like we have in any given situation. And so, for instance, if we are autonomous in our workplace, that means we have a lot of control over what we're doing. Maybe that be over your schedule, um, not a whole lot of micromanaging going on. Um, maybe you have control over what production you do. So, for instance, in here, I, I, at my job, I do research, but I'm not bound as to what kind of research. I get to choose. So I have autonomy in that level because I get to pick what research I do. If you're at um, another place where maybe you... It's hard for me to visualize places I don't work. Um, but let's say that we work in a business and I'm in charge of marketing. But as for what marketing I do or what marketing strategies I use, it's completely up to me. That gives me autonomy, control over my work, over, over my life, essentially. So we're going to say this is control. Essentially, this is what Covey's trying to predict, uh, project or present in his first three chapters. He's trying to develop us or to help us develop a way for us to be in control of our own lives, right? He's trying to... Um, give us the idea of understanding perception, being principle-centered, and whatever the three <laughs> whatever the three habits were, now I'm forgetting. Um, oh, begin with the end in mind. Oh, and be proactive. So if we're being proactive, obviously that's, he's helping us to be autonomous in our time, basically. Um, time management, being proactive, getting things done, production versus production capability. Um, beginning with the end in mind, that's helping us to focus and giving us autonomy in, again, our time management because we're able to achieve the goals that we, that we, that we really desire versus the goals that maybe are just here and now. And then, of course, putting first things first in order to achieve that end goal. Um, anyway, so autonomy, that gives us that control. But also, the thing is, is the reason I bring up self-determination theory is because I want to give some backing behind what Colby's saying. There's not a whole lot of um, empirical evidence behind this right now. I mean, I'm sure he has some out there, but in this book, um, there's not a whole lot provided. It doesn't give us a, you know, a study of 150 people and the 75 of them used the seven habits and then 75 didn't, and we looked at the difference at the end. There's not a whole lot of that, um, but there is a lot behind self-determination theory, and it gives some credibility as to why these seven habits work. Because basically what self-determination theory says is that if a person is autonomous, relatable and competent, that their wellness in life is generally good and thereby they're motivated to do whatever it is that they're doing. And so relatable, that's social. Call it socially um, engaged, maybe? And then competent, that means that obviously they're competent in their work. They're able to achieve their masters of what they're doing. And so, wow, I don't even remember who came up with this theory. Um, two people. <laughs> and it was just in like 2001, so it's not that long ago. Anyways, um, the authors of this theory, they say that these three elements, if you have these things in balance and they're, they're all high, then you're highly motivated to do something. And so this gives us not only a way to look at Covey's, but then also to look at ourselves and to look at our employees because it gives us a method of motivating any of those people. So for instance, if I'll, I'll show you in just a moment, there's a way for you to measure to see what a person's autonomy looks like, what their relatability levels are, what their competence level is. And if you look at those things, and let's say that out of 10, because that's, that's actually what it scores out of, it scores out of 10. 
So they take the inventory, this little survey thing, and they score, uh, let's say they score a 9, 10, and a 4. Okay, so they're scoring 40% on competency, 100 out of relatable, and um, 90 out of autonomy. That's the person that comes to work. They have control over their time, over what they're doing, and, and everything like that. They get along with their coworkers. They have maybe friends at work. Um, they, they just get along with everybody. They, they talk to people on a regular basis. However, they're not motivated. They, you, you feel like maybe they're not reaching their potential because maybe they don't want to be there for whatever reason. But you look around and you're like, well, they have fun with everybody. They are in control of their schedule. What is the problem? And then you look here and you find that they got a 4 out of 10 in competency. And so in that particular situation, you might start to think, is this a problem with their work? Are they not very good at their job? Is, essentially, is that what, the, what we're looking at? But then it's vice versa. If you look at it the other way, If they have 10 in competence, and they have 10 in autonomy, but they're sitting at a 3 in relatable, that's the person that comes to work. They have complete control of their schedule. They can do whatever they want. They're completely competent in their work. They're masters. They present on, 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 on you know, very well. They're very good presenters. And they just do everything right. But then you kind of see them in their office by themselves all the time. And maybe they're introverted. That's fine. But everybody needs some kind of interaction, right? Um, Maybe our levels, maybe some one person's level of, of requirement for interaction is much lower than than where we are, than another person's, but that isn't to say that everybody, you know, we're, we're not in the in the hole in prison, right? <laughs> we're not in solitary, so that's everybody needs some kind of interaction in order to have that wellness, right? And so that's what this is. All of these are going to score twenty three. And this score basically says wellness. And if they're lacking in that area, maybe, they, I mean, 23 out of 30, that's 46 out of 60, it's not, it's not so bad. But if you find that they're, they're not motivated, you have to find out what is it about them that, that, that's keeping them from being motivated. Because once you get this 3 up to maybe a 7, now this theory says, that that's going to increase the level of motivation for that worker, or for you, or for whomever, whomever. And so, what I want to do now is I'm going to pause this video so that I can bring up the inventory. It's uh, self-determination, uh, I don't know, inventory. I'll bring it up um, in just a second, and I will show that to you. Okay, all right, so I'm back here. And so now, let me blow up my screen so I can see what you guys are seeing there. Okay, so the AFS scale, uh, for self-determination theory. This is kind of an inventory that you can take yourself. And there's no assignment required with this um, because it is kind of just a supplement to the reading already. And so I'm not going to add an assignment because I feel like you guys have a ton of work to do it already this week. So anyways, I just want to show it to you nonetheless so you can understand what we're talking about here. So in this, this was created by a guy named Reeve. Yeah, there he is. Sikinius and Reed. And what he did is he created a scale called the Activity Feeling States Scale, and looks at how a person feels about any given situation. So according to him, you can replace this with whatever activity you want. Coming to work, completing this class, completing this assignment, waking up in the morning, checking the mail, mowing the yard, any of those things. You can replace this with any activity and ask him how it makes him feel. When you do that, then they at answer these from 1 to 7, 1 being strongly disagree, 7 being strongly agree. And at the end of the day, you can score these according to autonomy, competence, and relatedness. And from there, you can come up with a score out of, I put it out of 10, but this is out of um, 7. And actually, some of these are what they call um, standardizing variables which are they're, they're just there to kind of keep everybody on the same page that um, let's see I'm trying to find one let's see stressed free okay um, free actually it tells you down here somewhere oh, stressor stressed pressured and uptight those are oh filler items so not scored stressed pressured and uptight so capable obviously that's gonna fall under autonomy 
Um, I belong with the people and people here care about me. Relatability. Stress, we said no. Free, that would be autonomous. Involved with close friends. Uh, social ability or relatedness. Social ability. Competence, that's going to fall under obviously competency. I'm doing what I want to be doing. Autonomy, because they have control over what they're doing. Emotionally close to the people around me. Relatedness. My skills are improving. Competence, competence and then another autonomy. Here I'm free to decide for myself what to do. So let's say that I so, blah, 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 blah. let's say I scored well, I can't show you how to do that here. Oh I can I can highlight them. Here we go. Somewhere. Can't I? Ah, here it is. So let's say I said um making a pizza. Making a pizza. Because I, I don't think I could really cook a pizza. Like I can do microwave, I mean toaster, well shoot, oven pizzas, like the ones you buy from the store, but I don't think I can make like an actual pizza. So let's see, how capable do I feel in making a pizza? From one to seven, I'm going to do like a three, because I'm not real real confident. I belong here and the people care about me. Now, if I'm at my house, obviously I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to roll a seven on that one, because I feel like you know, my family. If I'm making a pizza for my family, they're gonna they're gonna feel like I belong there. Stressed, or I'm gonna throw that one out because it's not scored anyways. If I was gonna measure it, you could use that to kind of ask to, to, for a stress level, a general stress level, because that could in some way be playing into um, what's causing them to be demotivated, whatever that might be. Because if they're stressed because they don't have control over something, well, then it's probably autonomy. But if they're stressed because they don't know what they're doing, well, that might be competency. And if they're stressed because they don't have any friends, well, that's relatedness. So you could still score this one. Stressed? I'm going to say, yeah, I'm probably going to be stressed making a pizza because I don't know what I'm doing. Free? Free to choose the pizza? Yeah, I'm making the pizza. So I'm going to go with that one. Um, involved with close friends? Nah, I feel like I'm making it by myself. But I'm also I'm making it for other people, so maybe I'm I'm neutral on that one. Pressured? I don't feel pressured. Well, actually, you know what? I feel pressure to do a good job, and so that's kind of that's where I'm talking about before. Remember, my I said I was stressed because I wanted I'm I'm worried I'm not gonna be able to do a good job, and then I'm pressured because I I feel like I'm pressured to do a good job. That could lead you to kind of look at that person's competence level. They probably don't have a whole lot of skill, or maybe they're just not confident in their skill. And so that could be some place to look to, to motivate your employee or yourself. Competent. I do not feel competent making a pizza. Uh, I'm doing what I want to be doing. Yes, I am doing what I want to be doing. I'm just not very good at it. Uptight. Yep. Emotionally close to the people around me. Yep. Because I'm doing it for my family. My skills are improving. I might look at that and be like, okay, I'm doing this. Um, oop, no, that's not what I meant. I didn't mean to do that one. Well, there we go. My skills are improving, yes, because I'm doing it, and I feel like if I do it once, I can do it better the next time. Um, let's see. Free to decide for myself what to do. Yep, I'm making the pizza. So now, let me dial it back here and open up this thing. So now you can score this. And sorry, my screens are all over the place now. I've got two screens. Um, on autonomy, now I'm going to go through, I'm going to rate the ones that have to do with control. Um, free. Freedom. I got a seven there. I'll add these up. I got a seven. And so I'm going to highlight that to show myself that I already counted it. Involved with close friends. Competent. I'm doing what I want to be doing. I got another seven there. And my uh, free to decide what I want to do. I got another seven there. So those are the autonomy ones. So I got three sevens. You can probably predict that I'm, I, I feel pretty autonomous, pretty much in control when I'm making that pizza. Uh, capable. Let's do competency now. Can I change my color? I don't know how. Anyways. There we go. Okay, so capable, I got three. And competent, I got a two. And my skills are improving. I actually got a six on that one. So this goes to show you that even if a person is not competent, I hate to say incompetent because that's kind of a negative word, but if they're not competent, 
they're still going to have some areas, or they could still have some areas in which they're doing pretty good. They may not have complete and utterly utter lack of confidence, but um, they're probably still going to have a low score, which you can kind of tell from behind me. So the other three uh, I belong here that people care about me, involved with close friends, or four, and emotionally close with a seven. So you can kind of rank those scores. Now, if you wanted to use the stressed, pressured, and uptight, like I was saying earlier, you would just follow those up. And so if you see that the person is uptight, pressured, and stressed, you would need to go back and kind of ask them why. Why are you feeling that way? What is it that's actually causing that problem? And so it's that level of developing that relationship with the employee or with yourself. You're asking yourself, why am I stressed? Why am I pressured? Why am I uptight? So anyway, let's get these scores. So we'll have 21 out of 21. 7, 14, 18 out of 21, and 11 out of 21. So you can kind of see it. There's a clear, what they call dichotomy. There's like a, there's a gap there. <laughs> there's a gap in confidence. And so if you look at that, just from those three numbers, you can kind of tell that, yeah, I feel like I'm in control of what I'm doing. I feel like I have people around me that I'm related to. Well, maybe not literally related to, but I'm relatable with. And uh, however, my competency is almost half. I'm at a 50% rating for competency almost. So that might give you as a leader a way to kind of look at them and say, hey, we need to figure out a way to either get this guy competent or woman or make them a little more competent so that they can pursue it on their own. Either way, because right now, sorry, I did that wrong. <laughs> How do I get more than I started with? Um, 21, 29, 39, 40, 50. Okay, yeah, so 50 out of 63. That's actually a pretty good score. I mean, that, that says that that person is probably a little bit motivated, but if you need them to improve, you can see that there's clearly a place for them to start working on improvement, right? So anyways, that is self-determination theory. And like I said, I feel like I'm super close now. I'm going to bag up. Like I said, so this is an instrument that you can use when assessing yourself. And so what I would maybe suggest um, this week for group leaders, there's a couple things that you can use. Because remember, uh, you have the, down here, as soon as it scrolls, oops, there we go. You have the group discussions, right? As the group leader, there's a couple of things you could do here. Um, you could either just simply talk about the assignments, or you could talk about creating a mission statement together, or you could talk about doing the um, AFS scale, that inventory, and having everybody take it and see how motivated they are in the class. Um, that's completely up to you guys. You don't have to do either of those. Those are just some suggestions that I thought of when I was doing it. Um, so anyways, that is the end of this uh, video. And if you guys need anything else, of course, let me know and I will uh, get with you and, and, and help in any way I can. Have a good week.